guys. This is Anthony. This is Isaac. <laughs> this is <laughs> Stephanie. Thank you guys for tuning in today. Um, happy National Nutrition Month. Yeah. I know you guys are probably not going to necessarily see this during March, but March is National Nutrition Month. Mm -hmm. um, the theme for this particular Nutrition Month is go further with food. Um, it's going to be a lot of really cool things that I'm going to be putting up on my Instagram. So when you see this, you can always go back and take a look. Um, we should slide it forward. Yeah, we can. I was about to say that. That's why I kind of looked at it. I was like, yeah, well, see, why don't we just edit this one first? Yeah, I'll just, I'll just, I'll, I'll just, finish the one that I'm yeah. doing right now. And then I'll just try and get this one done as much as I can and get it up even early before Friday. Oh, perfect. Well, then, yeah, that would be great. Then, yay, you guys yeah. get to actually see this during Nutrition Month. Sweet. There you go. Um, but, yeah, we'll be putting a whole bunch of stuff on my Instagram, on my Facebook page. Um, I've got a lot of really cool stuff that I've kind of put together. Um, I'm also going to be putting together an email list specifically for this club. So if that's something that you want to get on, we're going to be sending, at least I know what I want to put into the emails is like recipes, um, helpful tips and things. So psychology type articles that have to do with habit change, um, any new nutrition information that comes out. So, I mean, I would like to kind of do that once a week. Um, so if that's something that you guys are interested in, feel free to go ahead and email any of us um, and we'll put you on that list. And whatever you guys want to do, I want to give you guys the like login information for that. That way awesome. you guys can go in and edit and add something. A weekly thing as well. Absolutely, and it'll I really come out. Like that. Yeah. Uh, I don't it's know what day idea. it'll come out. Maybe Sunday, because then that way we can edit it over the weekend. But um, but once we get those little details figured out, um, we'll let you guys know. But I definitely want to get that done. But happy National Nutrition Month. That makes me really happy. Yeah, we get our own month. I, like I that. know <laughs> that nobody knows about. <laughs> But it's exciting. Yeah. So with that, what do you think the, I mean, going back to basics, what do you think good foundation for nutrition should be? I know we've talked about a lot about mm -hmm. gut health and everything else, but what is a good foundation? Honestly, the best foundation that I can possibly think of, if you do nothing and nothing else, don't change your habits, don't anything, just incorporating a multivitamin is a big deal. That's, that's true. So something else you can do, so you do multivitamin one, something else you can do is, oh man, there's so much you can do. Yeah. Uh, eat slow. So. Yes. Uh, chew thoroughly or eat slowly. I, I, I'd say maybe not eat slowly, that's kind of big. Chew thoroughly is the, the thing I'm really trying to say. Because um, you can still chew like crap and eat slow because you're walking around eating with yeah. your left hand or something, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I would say chew thoroughly. So many people, and I know it was a big issue for me, um, something that's changed the last two weeks as well has been I'm chewing much better and eating less protein at night. So um, I think that's something people need to do, especially as you get older. Maybe eat with purpose. Eat with purpose, yeah. Yeah, just focus on that meal. Um, I was actually telling you guys this about earlier, but... Um, monotasking is literally just one thing, focusing on one thing versus trying to multitask because it's actually incredibly difficult, if not impossible, to truly multitask. And so when you're eating, maybe not focusing on the television, maybe not um, playing with your phone, Absolutely. you know, just focus on the food. What does it taste like? What's the texture? Um, is it too hot? Is it too cold? Um, how would you change this next time? What does it need? So really just think about that food while you're chewing it and slowing down to allow your body to register when it's full. Yeah. Hmm. What's your uh, biggest, not actually, biggest, but one of, one of the big, most important? This time of year, of course, depending on where you are, I would say eat outside. Oh, yes. Because you're going to slow down. It's going to be more less stressful. You're taking away, and it was, it's funny because you're taking away all the other stuff. Cause typically, yeah. if you're outside, if you try and look at your phone out in the sun, it's you like... Can't. Can't see it. It's so uncomfortable. You're like, I'm not even gonna do this. And then you get the vitamin D. Oh, I you know, like that. Easy. Yeah, because it's the easiest thing that you can do. In, in my opinion, getting outside is the easiest thing for anyone to do. It's gonna have the biggest health impact, but without because we're gonna think about change. You don't well, have to change anything. Just and go what, sit outside. Even eat bad food outside. You're better off than eating bad food inside. Mm -hmm. Well, absolutely. But also, changing the whole environment. Probably gonna eat less. Yeah. It's just the whole stimuli is different, and we know how important that is. It's difficult. And just switching up your route home can make a huge yeah. difference in what you're doing. That's true. Yeah. I, I know like when we again when we're sitting in the TV room, the urge to snack is there at night when we're in the office or hanging out. 
even if I sit at the kitchen table, yeah. even though it's closer to the kitchen, it's not the same. Because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm working on the kitchen yeah. table. You know, on the couch, it's kind of like this relaxed, like, I'm bored, but I'm watching TV, and I need to keep something mm -hmm. busy. So What I started doing is actually wearing noise-canceling headphones when I sit at the table to do my homework. Um, because, and I'll put on, like, really relaxing, like, piano music or something yeah. that's just sound yes. and I've noticed that I focus better we do that too. when I'm doing yeah. my homework and I can't hear everybody else in the house so I don't get distracted by the cats or the dog kind of zone out a little bit exactly and I realize that I'm literally just focusing on my homework and I get it done faster and I feel like I'm more efficient because I'm not yeah. wanting to go do other things mm -hmm. well that goes back to you had said was it you get you'd up and snack when you're in the kitchen doing mm -hmm. work before and now that's that's gone just because of Headphones. Exactly, because I can't hear everything else that's going on. Yeah. So when I hear my sister walking into the room <laughs> and she'll start talking to me, I'll get up and I'll go to the fridge. And it's just, it's one of those things that I just do. Mm. It's not, so funny. it's not a, I wanted to go grab something. I just get up and I go open the fridge or I get up and I go in the pantry or I get up and I go look through the cabinets. And I'm like, I don't know why I got up in the first place, but I heard somebody talking. So I got up to just go do something, but now not hearing Everybody else in the house. It doesn't I just, break focus. It doesn't, and yeah. I can focus on my homework. That's I don't get so distracted. Cool. They can watch like whatever that. they want to on TV, and it you know it keeps me it keeps me uh, accountable to getting my stuff done. And then I can still relax at the end of the day, watch maybe like an episode or something on TV, and then go to bed. It's amazing how that one little thing will change. I mean, and think about it. It's what you're listening to or what you're not listening. And it's to. not numbers related. Yeah, like it's no count your calories or. Make sure you, it's just change your psychology of, of everything, change, you know, monotasking versus trying to do everything perfect, being good enough, right? <laughs> and then, this, it's the power of the thing, no, was the book called The Power, power of One? one. Yeah. So you think about that. And Neo they, Buddha. Yeah, and you're not, you're not, we're not telling you to change the world. Like, each one of these small things, like if you did go outside and eat, you're by default limiting the TV that you can watch. Because you can't really bring a TV outside with you. I mean, some people have them on their back patios, whatever. Not, not that's true. House. That's true. Um, you're not really going to be looking at your phone. If you're out there with other people, you're more likely to talk to them, which will slow down your eating process. Mm -hmm. And then you're just outside. And usually when you're outside, especially this time of year, you're more casual, you're more relaxed. It's you not like you're going to rush. Something, and in, in back to the social setting, um, and I've had in pro coach responses multiple times see this, people are more aware of, their eating habits when they're with people mm -hmm. because they don't want to be embarrassed yeah. in the sense mm -hmm. of, oh, I'm done eating? Oh, you guys aren't done yet? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Maybe Which, I eat like a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Which, yeah. But that can go good and bad, though, because if you're with other people who eat fast... Very true. That's, so that goes back to the, having that awareness of how you eat. Who you are and yeah. how it works with you and exactly. Yeah. And back to those questions of who am I with, where am I at, what time is it, right? You know, the emotional state... It could be people make you snack, right? Or it could be people make you aware of <laughs> eating too fast. Yeah. So. I'm trying to think of who I was just talking to. We were talking about the breakdown they were having. And I was like, it's emotional, but we've got to figure out what's causing the trigger. And they were like, yeah, well, I'm sitting there and like, you know, who the heck was it? I was talking to one of my clients about, it was about her sister. I can't remember okay. who the heck it was. But she's like, she can't. Like, every time that she does something, it's a reward system, so she'll eat based on reward. So she goes out with her sister to eat, so I, I can use mm -hmm. you because you and your sister. Yeah. So every time her sister does something, her sister takes her out to eat. So, like, if it would be the same as you, you just got an A on the test, so you take your sister out to eat. So every mm -hmm. time you do something, your sister gets rewarded by you eating. So you're rewarding uh... yourself. And her, and of course you don't think about it because you're going out with your family, you're going out with yeah. whatever else. It's like, hey, let's go get lunch. Okay. And then you're, you're celebrating, you're laughing, you're joking, you're having a good time. But and that's, then it's the, like, that's a trigger. That's yeah. a situation. And it's a positive situation because you're celebrating your success. Now it's become a negative thing for your nutrition and health because yeah. it's like, this is awesome. So we got to find a way to positively break that yeah. cycle versus the other cycles. I really like that you bring that up. Um, one article that I've just been reading, um, I think I've brought him up before, James Clear. He's a psychologist, and I absolutely love, 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 love his articles. And one of the ones that he brings up is the three R's of change, which I don't remember exactly what they stand for, but I know it's reward. Um, reward's the last one. Reminder is the first one, and I don't remember what the, um, the third one is. But the idea behind it is, and this is been proven over and over and over again with lots and lots of different studies, um, 
in terms of habit change and in terms of negative habit change or positive habit change is having a reminder. Um, so a cue for you to start doing a new habit. So let's say every single day, I say let's say, I hope every single day you're brushing your teeth. Um, <laughs> every single day you brush your teeth, that's something you do absolutely without fail. Now let's say you want to go ahead and start taking a multivitamin, but you never remember. What's something that you do every single day without fail? You brush your teeth. So why not tack on this new habit to your already every single day reminder of brushing your teeth in the morning and at night? So now every single day after brushing your teeth, you take your multivitamin. So now you don't ever have to remember to do this habit because you already have a reminder every single day so it's easier to change that habit. Changing habits is that easy of trying to figure out what it is you do every single day without fail. Absolutely. And not necessarily always what you do, but what happens to you. Every single day we're going to stop at a red light. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. Every single day we're going to have to eat. Every single day somebody is going to talk to us. Every single day we're going to have to open a door. So there's little things that depending upon what you want to change or what you want to do, tack that new, better habit to something you do without fail. That is beneficial to have that already reminder cue for you to do what you want to change versus having to set an alarm on your phone because that's what I tried doing. I tried setting an alarm on my phone to but remind that's me. that's not a habit. That's it's not. New. Exactly. It's like this is for me to remind me to go to bed early. I hear my alarm, I shut it off, and I don't pay attention to it. Okay, well now it's a matter of me sitting down and figuring out what do I do every night that I can tack on this reminder yep. for me to go to bed early. I haven't quite figured that out yet. But <laughs> it's a matter of now I've got to sit down and really think about it. What is going to be my reminder every single day of being like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to be going to bed in the next 20, 30 minutes. Yeah. Let's start you know, winding down and you know, doing whatever that is. Um, I started exercising um, again, and I'm using my coming to work as my reminder. Because my excuse was, I'm going to wake up early, and do I'm never going to wake up early. I'm never going to wake up early. I know that. I lied to myself over and over and over again, telling myself that I'm going to get up early and, and work out at the house. No, that didn't happen. It didn't work. And, of course, now it makes me feel like a failure because I'm not getting up early and doing it. Well, I know because I'm not going to do that. So my thing is, make sure that my homework is done during the day so that after my shift, I work out for 30 to 40 minutes, and then I go home. My homework is already done, unless there's something I need to finish. Let's do it really quick and then submit it. But that's my reminder. That's my reminder is I'm already here. I'm already here, change my clothes, do a quick workout, and then go home. And I have successfully worked out three times this week. Yeah, that's awesome. And it's been because I don't have to think about it. Yeah. I don't think about it. I know I'm going to work, so put on my work shirt and grab an exercise shirt. I've got workout pants on already every single day. All i got to do is change my shirt. How hard is that? So making it as easy for you as possible is really the ideal thing. Yeah, I think that's huge because people try and overcomplicate it. And we had that in the, uh, the seminar that we did it was last Saturday. We were talking about like everyone's lifestyle and how do, how do I find the perfect balance? How do you find the one thing that you can switch is really the right question to ask. Yeah. What is the one thing that I could do right now today to impact everything else? Yeah. So finding the cue for bed would be huge. But that could also be something as simple as you come home and do you eat when you get home or no? After Most of the time I do, yeah. Do you watch TV, like, after that? No, honestly, I don't usually watch TV. When do you take a shower? Um, usually in the mornings, but now because of the exercise, I've started to take a shower before I go to bed. So Which is right before bed? Pretty much, yeah. So maybe just take a shower. Earlier. Earlier. Yeah, pretty much when I get home. Yeah. Yeah. That so would not that you want to go to bed like at seven, but yeah. switching up your routine where you're like, oh, I normally take a shower now. Oh, I'll just go to sleep. I'm ready to shower. Yeah. I mean, that's not a bad to idea. Start just start moving that yeah, up. Yeah, a little bit. You know, go from basically eating to the shower, and then you mm -hmm. can start your night routine there. Because, I mean, you're getting out of here, what, eight after your workout? Do you watch mm -hmm. TV before you shower? Mm -hmm. you have, like, a setting down period where... No, not really. I usually sit, um, just because my evenings are a little weird, I don't like sitting down and watching TV because I'll get distracted, mm -hmm. and I'll just keep watching TV, and then I, by the time I realize it, it's, like, midnight. I'm exhausted, mm -hmm. and I've been exhausted for the past two hours, but, but I'll just, keep watching TV. Yeah. So I usually don't watch TV during the week. Um, I usually come home, 
sit down, I'll review all my like assignments and stuff that are due, make sure that I've turned everything in, make sure that I'm up to date on everything. Um, I'll check and make sure that I've checked in my clients up for the day. Uh, usually we'll eat and I usually chit chat with the family. Um, and then I usually finish up whatever homework I have is usually what I do. Is it around the same time? Mm, more or less, yeah. I usually don't get up from the table until I'm ready to... I might go sit on the couch so and like So what you're saying you want to do is just cut your homework time a little shorter so you can go to bed sooner? Pretty much, yeah. Like I want to try to get to bed by like 10, 10.30 versus 11, 11.30. Just because getting up so early, I'm not quite getting enough sleep, so I'm noticing I'm a little bit more tired during the day. And I've definitely noticed that I've been more tired because of the exercise. And so I feel like my body absolutely needs that extra hour now. Absolutely. And so I just want to go to bed a little bit earlier. But I'm still stuck in the going to bed at 11.30, 11 o'clock that I, like, forget. Have you, like, tried going to bed and there's still, like, little things you do where you end up staying up till 11, 11.30? Oh, yeah. So funny. Absolutely. Yeah, it's happened to me before. Um, what do, I'm trying to think what I've done to go to bed. I just go to the bedroom. Yeah. But would it be possible for you to do your homework check and stuff before you head to work? Absolutely. Every single day before I have to come here, I have at least an hour to, that I use to change and get ready. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe shower or whatever it is, depending upon if I showered that morning. Um... But yeah, I could definitely move that up and go over everything at that time and yeah. cut that time out for the afternoon. Because this way you're just making the shift and then your afternoon kind of opens up and then you can go home, do all the visiting and everything else and not have any extra work to do. So there's mm-hmm. something hanging over your head. And then once you're done eating and chatting, hit the shower and then it hits mm-hmm. that, that reset of, okay, now it's bedtime. It's getting ready for bed, yeah. So maybe you do chat for a little bit longer and then out. Yeah. No, I like that idea. Because mm-hmm. I know for me it's the one thing I do like... I've set up everything the night before, and once I've got everything loaded in my bag for the night, I go right into the room and I lay down. Like, Katie literally knows it's time for bed when I start pulling out clothes. Yeah. Mm. So what are you doing? I'm like, I'm just getting my bag ready so that I can literally lay down, grab this bag, and walk out the front door. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. It's so, it's whenever I don't have my bag ready, mm-hmm. the next morning I'm running behind. Yeah. Because you're like, shit. Gotta get everything. Fuck. And it's different, so you're slower at putting shit mm-hmm. together, and you know. You gotta think about it. You gotta go, go yeah, through that. Yeah, versus that. doing it when you're supposed to, you don't forget anything, yeah. everything's mm-hmm. neat. And you saw it all go in, there was no question, did yeah. I put that in there, did I yeah. put that in there? So yeah. just literally just fold it all up, drop it in there, all I have to do, grab my tablet, drop it in. That's it, that's Don't exactly me. the only thing that's left out for me too, yeah. The nights that I know, like Wednesdays, because I have to leave at seven o'clock to get to my internship rotation, like I have to leave by seven. Mm-hmm. And if I take my time getting out of bed, I don't have time to make my shake because I usually will drink it on the way there or I'll drink it there while I'm talking to my preceptor. Um, but if I don't have enough time to make it, I'll be like crazy hungry because sometimes you go to lunch at 12, sometimes you go to lunch at one, depending upon what it is they're having us do that day. So I'll, a lot of times what I've been doing now is making my shake the night before for that day. Like I don't do it for any other day because I, I have enough time, I have the five minutes to make it because um, I've got everything pre-frozen so I'll put it in, but Wednesday morning, if I if I leave the house at 7.05, I will be late. That is how bad the traffic will accumulate within those five minutes. Like, I have to be That's gone true. by 7. Yeah. And so, I've been making my shake the night before. Yeah, it'll separate a little bit in the fridge, but I just shake it and, you know, go about it's my business. It's pretty normal again. Yeah, yeah, and it's fine. Um, so, I've been doing that to make my mornings easier and having my bag ready. Um, that way, all I have to do is shower, do my hair really quick, throw on my clothes, and grab my bag and grab my shake and go. Because they feed us while we're there, which is kind of nice. <laughs> That's awesome. Do you notice that your Sunday night, you get to bed earlier because of that? Mm. Or is it about the same? No, oh, it's about the same. It just depends. Like weekends, weekends I will watch TV. And I will kind of get sucked into shows. And then that will keep me up. So I have a hard time going to bed early on weekends. Which it's still like 11 o'clock, which no. is not bad. But... Um, when I would like to start waking up around 6 a.m. every morning, I definitely need to try to get to bed a little bit earlier. And that's yeah, been something that I've been working with David, too, is he gets up at 6 o'clock, but he always feels bad. He doesn't want to wake me up. So when I'm like, make sure I get out of bed, 
he doesn't make sure I get out of it <laughs> because he doesn't want to wake me up. He feels bad. Um, but he's, I've been trying to work with him in terms of, you know, bo us both trying to keep each other accountable about going to bed on time and, and stuff like that. So. And you tried setting an alarm for mm -hmm. going to bed? And that I just turn it off. <laughs> you got and then right back yep, to I put my phone right back down. Gotcha. And I, it's one of those things that it's just because it's going off. I don't know. And it's yeah. like, in my mind, yeah. I think that would help, but it doesn't. And so it's like... What about putting it in your schedule? Actually, you know what? That probably would help because I look and at my schedule. And having a reoccurring schedule and maybe in the notes or description, the why, your why is the, yeah. the motivation behind mm -hmm. going to sleep. Because the one thing I really like about this phone is it's so synced into everything that I have. And because it's a Google Pixel, which is amazing, oh, by the way. The I want. It's so awesome. That's the, and you have I Verizon? Love it. No, I had AT&T. How did you get it? You buy it unlocked from Google. Oh, so you have to pay yeah. the full price, though? No, I did a payment plan. Oh, they have a payment plan? Yeah, through Google. They have a payment plan for everything now. Everything. I'm about to get it. It's oh. the best decision I have ever made. I, I love, love the Google phone. I, I mean, phone. I've been wanting it. The only reason I haven't got it is because I thought it was only Verizon. Mm -mm. And so I bought it unlocked. Because that's what I thought, too. I went and oh. looked at Google, and you can get it unlocked for all the other... You went to Google? Yeah, go to... Not oh, Google.com. Google, I'm like, what is a Google store? Yeah. You're like, where? <laughs> now, you're really hey. now, 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 now I'm like lost. No, yeah, it's... Uh, so just go to Google.com. Just type in Google Pixel. Yeah. Good Google no, and I've gone to check it out. I don't know why I never noticed the payments. Or yeah, they have a I payment just plan. Never really, I just looked at the pictures, and I was like, one day at and will have it. It's no. amazing. I love this What's phone. your favorite thing about it? how synced in it is to my email. I get all my pro coach updates in like real time because when I get a new email, I immediately get a notification which goes to my watch. Okay. Um, and then my calendar is all here. I like being able to do, I have my full calendar on my screen on my next page. So this oh, is something that I keep a track you, of. So you're coming from an iPhone family? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and so I, yeah, yeah, so there's a lot of different things. For sure, like, for you. From yeah. that. So I like being able to have my full... Um, Do you use the squeeze option? Oh, all the time. So cool, right? Yeah. And it's, it's pretty fast? It's easy, yeah. Just you squeeze button. it and Google so Assistant comes So when up. you squeeze it, the Google Assistant will you come up. You can talk to her and she'll listen and you can... And she'll do what, you know... Huh. Google, when is National Nutrition Month? According to Eat Right Pro, National Nutrition Month is a nutrition education and information campaign created annually in March Love by it. the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. And the camera is bad. A the camera. It's the best Have you guys seen right my now. recent yeah. posts? That's with this camera. Yeah. All of those posts, like the much Dude, prettier, it's the brighter. It's the best camera out there. It's better than iPhone X. It's stunning. Oh. The, the, the light. Okay, so my living room is always dark. Yeah. And all the pictures of the cats I have been taking in the living room, and they are so much brighter. There's so much detail. Like you can see the individual little furs. It's not. You're the right. The camera the pictures are beautiful. is amazing. Like if there is nothing else I like about this phone, the camera is amazing. Uh -huh. um, That's it. The camera is great. The real time notifications for my calendar. So yeah, I could totally, and I didn't even think about that, I could totally put it in my schedule because it's something that comes yeah. up not only on my phone, it You'll comes up that. on my computer, it You'll comes up that. on my watch. You should do that. And then you could have it set up on the weekends, you could let it a little later on the weekends, mm -hmm. um, or not on the weekends. Yeah. yeah, no, that would be awesome. Oh, and one thing I really like about this too is it recognizes, because of Google Maps, it recognizes everywhere I go. It knows where I park. Which is awesome. So it reminds you where you park. It reminds me where I park. Yeah, that's cool. It tells you, like, um, because it's also Google, it does, rec like, bring places up. You recently went here. Do a yeah. review. Yeah. Which I've actually been doing reviews and stuff now just because I have that. It's, it's so easy just from yeah. right here. But maps, it tells me all the time how long it's going to take me to get places. Like, when you first open up, I love how this just went into, like, yeah. a <laughs> review on the Google Pixel. Yeah. Um, it gives me my temperature, like the temperature and stuff that's here, and you just tap on it, and it tells you, yeah. you know, for the whole week. So it, the system's still Android, like what yeah. we have. Yeah. It's just different. It's just the, I just really want the, the camera. The camera. I just want the Google amazing. phone, because I'm, I'm switching everything to Google. And curious. that's pretty much what I, but we're, we've pretty much done, too, and it, we love it. Like, we kind of want to get a Google Home now. Because oh, that's the best. I have the Mini. Yeah. I have three Minis and a Google Home. Oh. Yeah. And I have the Google Wi-Fi. Yeah. Which controls your internet. You can set a, you can set a, a guest Wi-Fi, which only gives them certain 
um, privileges and then you can have your family Wi-Fi and it buffers all the speeds. We have like 15 devices set up and not one of them are buffering. It like, As soon as I walk in, I can sync anything, mirror anything. It's so crazy cool. Yeah, it's so worth it. Like, and the mini Google is the same as the Google Home. The only difference is the sound quality. Mm. That's the only difference. So if you're using for your room, you just need the small one. You don't yeah. need the big one. Because um, the big one is like, I'll be in my room and say, hey, Google, to the one in my room, and the yeah. big one will pick it up. Oh. It's like got a really good ear. It's That's really, crazy. really good. Yeah, and awesome. you can set it up to where it's Google accounts. So I can talk to it and say, hey, play music, and it plays my specific playlist style. Yes, right. it recognizes Heather can the go people. in there and say it. Zared has his own playlist. Like he has his own, the voice it recognizes your voice just uh -huh. simply by your voice. You can just say, "Hey, Google, add something to my shopping list," and it adds it to your shopping list. And then you can go to your Google when you're shopping, and it's all there. Yeah, That's Google great. Keep is my favorite yeah. app. I loved Google Keep when I had the Android before, and I was so sad when I moved to the iPhone and lost my Google Keep. Yeah. I love it because I'll update it when I'm at school, like in class, and not paying attention to my professor. I hope none of my professors look at this. <laughs> um, and but I'll update my shopping list really quick. Do it in my Google Keep. It uploads it, and I can just pull this up, and it's fantastic. And I love it. And I like that you know we have a little Google Family, um, like group. So between David and I, so I can literally just add him to one of my Google Keep shopping shopping lists if he happens to go grocery shopping. And it's the same like. It's real time, mm -hmm. right? Yep. It's so cool. And so he gets that, and so I've done Zarin that multiple times. adds stuff to the grocery list when we're not even home, and when I go grocery shopping, I pull up the list, there's stuff on there, and I'm like, I didn't add this, and then I'm like, oh, Zarin did, because he yeah. needs <laughs> to toilet paper or toothpaste, or it's so it's cool. It's awesome. That's it's awesome. so cool, yeah. And that's what I was telling David, too. I was like, you know, if we get a Google Home, I said, the only thing is it's going to be connected to your stuff. And he was like, no, no, no. He's like, it'll recognize your name, too. He's like, so and your voice. And yeah. he's like, it'll recognize you. He's like, so you can set it up. He's like, I think you can set it up to five people. I think yeah. he's what he said. Five people. He's like, and then um, if I ask it, you know, how long is it going to take for me to get to work? He's like, not that it's a big deal because we all work in the same place. He's like, but how long is it going to take for me to get to work? He's like, you can ask it how long you it can take say, to get to work. You can say, what's my day look like? And it'll tell you what your day looks like. Yeah. And what the weather will be like. And his schedule will be different. And mm -hmm. it's, it's so cool. It's like the best. And Amazon so and now awesome. really My clients, I have one in my garage. Yeah, so I'm working out and stuff. It's just people are listening to music and blasting it, and it's got a good speaker, so when I'm working out in my front yard, yeah. you can still hear it. All right, now that we're done talking about awesome. Google, Google. <laughs> just let them know that they can fast forward yeah, if no, they're not interested in buying a new phone. <laughs> yeah. If you want to skip the next two minutes, yeah. go. But moving forward back to business, uh, what's Tony, what's your biggest reason or, or one of the reasons you give people... Um, as to why they need to be on a multivitamin. So the main thing I tell people is a multivitamin, <clears throat> multivitamin serves as a bridge for what you are getting to what you should be getting in your nutrition. Because most people aren't getting enough plants in their diet, they're not getting enough vitamins in, micronutrients in, they're not getting anywhere near what they should be getting in. And even if they are, they're sweating a ton, so they're losing a lot of it. So I tell them you're using it as a bridge, so even if you have a good diet, you live in San Antonio, Texas, you're sweating chronically, you're losing half of the nutrients you took in. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like to just say, uh, I always talk about, the biggest one is they just feel that they're getting vitamins and minerals, even if they're not opposed to supplements. They're like, well, I know I'm getting my fruits and my veggies. One, they're not even eating enough fruits yeah. and veggies. Two, the fruits and veggies and stuff we're getting are tr obviously traveling anywhere from a long distances and they're sitting in the fridge and so we're not getting the true, um, let's say, 100% of those nutrients that they say is in the calories or in the, the nutritional information. Mm -hmm. So getting those plant-based, high-quality supplements is going to really give you your zinc, right? Because the trace minerals aren't really even in the soil that they're fertilizing it with to regrow these crops. They're just using calcium and magnesium and the big ones, but not the trace minerals. So getting your zinc, and that's why a lot of people have these zinc deficiencies. Mm -hmm. What about you, Sue? I mean, I've always loved, I don't want to say the idea of a multivitamin, but I mean, none of us are perfect. I some days eat 12 servings of fruits and vegetables every single day, and some days I have two. Like, it's just how life goes. And having that to supplement with to make sure that your body isn't going to be deficient and making sure that you have a high quality 
multivitamin that is going to be bioavailable, that's going to be closest to what you get naturally in the foods because, yes, at the end of the day, if we could get every single nutrient from our food, it would be ideal. But how many of us are eating 10 to 12 servings of fruits and vegetables every day, varied, different colors every single day? None of us. None of us. And filling in those gaps with the important nutrients is going to be the most important thing and making sure that your body is functioning the way it's supposed to. Your brain's going to work better. Your body's going to work better. You're going to feel better. You're not going to get sick. I mean, unless you happen to run into somebody who's got this ridiculously contagious flu. But, I mean, you're, you're less likely to get sick. Your body You'll works better. You'll feel better faster. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. If your body can fight things off because the immune system is working how it's supposed to, that's ideal. And incorporating a probiotic in that as well is incredibly important because that's going to help with um, more efficient nutrient absorption and things like that. There actually is some, I don't remember exactly which probiotic it is, but it helps your body make vitamin K. Not anywhere near enough for you to like be sufficient, but it does make a little bit of vitamin K as a byproduct. And so you get a little bit of that. So having the right gut bacteria helps overall with nutrient absorption, helps overall with making sure that your um, immune system is working the way that it's supposed to, and then having the nutrients inside the body makes everything run more smoothly yeah. as well. So very back, important. Back to the moti, I, we, we all touched on like the quality, because mm-hmm. how many people do we have that they're like, oh, I'm taking one, I'm like, okay. And it's like, all right, where do you buy it from? And they're like, oh, H-E-B, or Target, or Whole Foods, or, yeah. you know, um, GNC, Vitamin Shop. Um, and then the dreaded syndrome. Yeah. Right? It's probably the I worst. I take women's one a day. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, that's the first thing I'm going to stop you there. <laughs> yeah. You need to switch that. But Centrum's probably the worst because it's like metal, lead, lead-based vitamins and minerals. Yeah. Um, others are synthetic. and So by getting a plant-based vitamin, you're ensuring your body's going to absorb up to what's ours, 96%, 96% absorption rate, which is lifetimes. Um, which is crazy good. That's a big um, deal. Up to 96, yeah. And factor that in with a good, um, or with our probiotic, you're going to get a much better gut health. Yeah. Much just body's going to work better, even if you don't change anything else. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, the absorbency is a big thing, because when you look at the Centrum, what is it, like 20 bucks for a bottle of 30? Their absorbency is 6%. So really, out of that 30 pills, 6% of that would be, what, one whole pill, give or take? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good way. You're you're absorbing one pill out of the thirty that you just spent money on. It's twenty dollar pill. So yeah, what's one twenty dollar pill? Well, so, what's the what's the damage it's causing? That's yeah. Uh, I mean, there's actually there's environmental ramifications for bad, low quality multivitamins. We can get into that at a different time because they don't break down. Yeah. So I mean, if you were to think about your multivitamin, like let's say you have a capsule, and you can do this. You take one capsule, put it on the ground. Or not a capsule, tablet. Put it on the ground and like step on it. Watch what happens. The weight of your body did not cause that to crack or change it any way. Just a form. little bit. Yeah, just maybe. grinds a little, maybe. Yeah. yeah, you're right. I mean, you could put that thing on cement. Well, you would you have to actually shop. grind it to do that. But yeah. yeah. So when you think about He's that, job. you could. You can actually you can <laughs> draw on them. Yeah. Um, and that's people don't think about it that way because it's put together with so much pressure, and now all of a sudden you're going to put that in your stomach. This thing that I can throw against the wall, and it's not even going to. It's going to chip my wall more than it's going to chip the freaking yeah. multivitamin. And your, What's our favorite thing right here? Yep, that's your stomach strength right yeah. there. If you st- <laughs> if you can't do that and destroy it, you're pretty much SOL. Yeah. Maybe I think about it. It's so big too. Mm-hmm. Those are so big. Those little cement blocks are so big. Hmm. There's only so much time those are going to be spending in your stomach mm-hmm. until yeah. they go through. So the little bit of time that it makes contact with your stomach acid, you might lose maybe one or two layers, but the rest of that big bulky pill is going to go through your intestinal tract. If it's not already out in its free form to be absorbed, it is not going to be absorbed. So that pill is just gonna pass through yeah. your intestinal tract and you're not gonna get anything. No lie, I've had clients, a client, I have had one client, we talked about it, he got an x-ray somewhere and pills were showing up. What? His x-rays, because they, bro- they had it dissolved, they got stuck in his wow. gut health, in his yep. GI tract. Yeah, so he's like, and from that moment on, he was like, I'm never, I am only getting quality supplements and stuff, so he's, which is a good thing, right? That is a good um, thing. But it's scary. Just but... to deal, like, to see that little pill stuck in your body on the x-ray machine, he's like, yeah, sure enough, you could just point right to it. It's like, whoa. Whoa. That's terrifying. Yeah. 
So I was curious about something, because if you look at it, you're talking about the pill and how it's going through your digestive tract. If you look at a multivitamin, if you look at most pills, they're in the shape of a bullet. Mm -hmm. Bullets are actually built to shatter on impact. Multivitamins aren't built for that. So I'm wondering, I was going to look to see which one's harder, an actual bullet or a multivitamin. Hmm. And I'm sure there's something on here. Yeah. But um, I think a lot of people, too, just yeah. don't associate their stress levels with their body using that as it's a primary source of fuel. Mm -hmm. You know, your body's gonna go through those nutrients and those minerals when you're stressed. So when you're stressed and you're exercising, you definitely need a, a multivitamin. Absolutely. And you might need more than just a multivitamin, right? Like a probiotic. Yes. Especially if you're not getting the right, all of those fruits and veggies that we're trying to get, then you might need to double your dosage. Right? And that might be okay. I've started doubling up my probiotic. Awesome. I'm doing, on an empty stomach, doing 40 billion, sometimes 60 billion units. And um, I'm no longer drinking my energy drink as my first, like, thing. I was getting into a bad habit, so I switched that. And, uh, well, a, a full month, a full month of CBD oil now. Yeah. And a full month of multivitamins. Um, two weeks of eating slower. What else did I change, Tony? Anything else? And I'm down to three percent body fat. Not doing it on Dang. purpose. I'm really it's not. It's just what It's happened. just yeah. I'm eating more. Oh, and I'm eating more. Yeah. I'm eating way more. Like consider because I started working out what the last month. Um, I so you need a little bit more. So already. I have to eat more, yeah. and, and I'm eating more. Um, still fasting. If anything, but if like let's say I crave that energy drink. Seven, eight, nine whatever, and it's really just because I'm at Lifetime, because when I'm not here at Lifetime, I don't have any energy drinks. It's yeah. just because I'm here. This is your reminder. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So when I do that, instead is, okay, instead of getting that energy drink, I'm gonna break my fast with an apple and peanut butter or something from the cafe, right? And then I'll have my energy drink with it, or usually by then I'll just wait an hour um, to have it, because I usually only have time to eat that, and then I'm just like, I'll just get my energy drink on my next break. Mm -hmm. um, that's really all it is, it serves as a, you know, something to do in the break to go get and then go upstairs to, you know, it's just it's yep. so funny. I got five minutes and run down here, grab this and go. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I've been running a bit more. I'm working on my, uh, I was getting some knee issues coming back into the workouts. And it's just because I haven't done anything for so long. So um, I've been running again, working on my form and gait and all that, my new mechanics. So I've done a little bit more cardio, started rowing again. And I bought my clubs and steel mace. Oh, yeah. I'm so excited to get those in. When did those get in? Are they they just shipped from on it. They shipped today. They're only coming from Austin. Tomorrow. Or I Monday. paid for priority mail, so I don't know. Tomorrow, hopefully. Maybe today. <sighs> today. They're coming from Austin. Priority? Does that mean like it's. I think priority's overnight. You know, I have no idea. 30 to 18, <laughs> I spent. <laughs> that should be overnight. If you're spending that much, I believe that's okay. Yeah. Well. That's cool. Because yeah. I can't wait to start taking them to the parks and get home. You know, just there. Just carry them up the hike. Yeah. Just carry them while I'm walking my dogs. <laughs> Might as well. It's awesome. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't find the density of the bullet versus the multivitamin. I yeah. will find it and I'll put it in here. I'm okay. sure there's a way to do it. The I'm sure thing, there's at least a comparison. Yeah. You know, because the one thing I found was like, you know, you take the number of grains in a pound, which is seven thousand, you divide the weight of the bullet by that, and I'm like, that's that's too much. Huh. That's mm -hmm. too much. Yeah. I'm like, I can't do that. Not right now. Yeah. Yeah. Not right now. I'm good. But I'm not that good. Man. But that's, um, I mean, back to the point of it, it's, you know, you look at something like that, it's that hard. Because when you look at those things, like, you can use those things. I mean, I'm pretty sure you could probably hit it with a baseball bat, and it wouldn't explode. Well, yeah, like, it'll just like probably break into crack pieces. It. Yeah. Probably crack it, but just that's break into pieces, it, yeah. which still shows, like, that's, do you have a baseball bat in your gut? No. Yeah. <laughs> Because if you think about we're it, we're not capsule. birds. We do not have stones. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, because that's our, what they. Yeah, that's yeah. what they have. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, birds. And that's where like the the capsulated one, they dissolve when they hit liquids, so they you don't have to worry acid, about breathing. Or like, drinking it with water. Well, yeah. So what ends up happening is the little bit of time that it's in your stomach acid in the water and everything that's you're you're putting it down there that breaks up, and because it's already powdered, all of that the free forms or the attached forms, depending upon how those particular multivitamins have to be packaged, mm -hmm. um, those are going to be available to be broken down by enzymes in your stomach and released for immediate absorption once it hits your intestinal tract. That way, you don't have to break something down to allow it to be absorbed. It's literally just dissolve the little capsule. Or even if you don't want to deal with that, if you have a hard time with capsules, 
open it up and it literally just break it and put it in a sm your smoothie, your shake. Yep. Blend that up in there and there you go. You don't have to actually take you your multivitamin. Taste it. Absolutely. Which goes back to that whole this because you're literally taking the capsule. You just do. <laughs> and it's yeah, you very can't do that easy. with another tablet. Yeah, you can't. And if you try and put a tablet in a blender, one, I've done this before. Not even no exaggeration. One, it sits in there and ting, 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 ting for, I mean, think about how fast a blender blade's going. So it's going and basically just dinging the crap out of your blade for a while until oh. it finally gets down to being like a chunk that stopped getting It just fit yeah. through the cracks or through yeah. this. Gosh. Yeah, it's bad. I mean, Something I think that, uh, that they get, that people have too, what they have is they're taking the multivitamin, all bad quality, mm -hmm. but they're also taking like a B vitamin, a biotin, a, Whatever, the, the amino, the, what they're just taking this list, yeah. and uh, it's kind of like they're like they're spending a hundred bucks on supplements, right? Mm -hmm. And then when we tell them, it's like you need to switch your multivitamin to this, yep. and it's more important to do this one thing and give up these other supplements yeah. just so you can afford it. That's what it is. If it's a cost thing and you're worried about spending thirty five dollars on a multivitamin, then you need to give these up to spend that. Yeah. Touching on that too is I do not like hearing that somebody's taking a multivitamin and additional supplements as well, unless that multivitamin does not provide yeah. what it is that you yes. need. Because yeah. a good quality multivitamin you that is, need anything else. you should not need anything else. On top of that, there are a lot of toxicity symptoms that you can get from over consuming multivitamins. Mm -hmm. um, really and truly, some of the only ways that you can get toxicity symptoms is from supplementation. Um, if you're eating a natural diet and, you know, having an, a multivitamin and only one multivitamin, you're not going to hit those upper level limits that have been, you know, set specifically because yeah. research has shown that over consuming like selenium, for example, if you eat six, um, Brazil nuts every single day, you will overdose on selenium. That's so easy to do. Yeah. Overdose. And because the upper level limit for selenium is 400 micrograms. <laughs> and one Brazil nut is 98 micrograms oh, that's so easy. of selenium. Mind you, selenium is a, a trace mineral that you need, so that's something that the upper level limit is a little on the low side because you don't need a lot of it. Yeah. But literally, one Brazil nut a day will supply you with your daily amount of selenium. 25%. <laughs> exactly. Will supply you with what you need. Um, but over consuming them, eating 16 of them a day, it is very, very easy to run into those toxicity symptoms. And that happens the same thing as if you're taking a multivitamin and a B12 and a B6 and a biotin. And you're over consuming nutrients. So crazy, yeah. Well, it's, and it's so just, even you don't want to do that. So, even, so think about it. If you, have the, the, if you had all those like tablets and you had all of that, you're getting a percentage here, percentage there, percentage here. So back to your point about spending money on a whole bunch of tablets, you're yeah, wasting a whole bunch of money. Yeah, and then, yeah, and then exactly too. What's the absorption rate of those things? Mm -hmm. So not only are you going to be excreting probably a lot of that, mm -hmm. um, having like the multivitamin from Lifetime that has the 96 from Lifetime, as if we're not yeah. talking about Lifetime. Yeah. Um, having the 96 percent, um, you know, absorption rate. Absorption rate. Yes, you're going to get rid of a little bit, but that's just the nature of nutrient absorption. That's going to the same, very similar thing is going to happen with fruits and vegetables. You're not going to absorb every single tiny thing that's in there. You're going to absorb, hopefully, 80 to 98% of what's in the food, and that should be the same thing for your multivitamin as well. And if your multivitamin is providing you with everything that you need, you do not need extra supplements. You don't need to run into the chances of um, putting yourself into toxicity symptoms. And a lot of toxicity symptoms, doctors aren't going to be able to diagnose. I can tell you that right now because they look like other things. So, yeah, they, they won't even know. They, the, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be honest. Well, they don't even know about the nutrient deficiencies that are very, very obvious that yes. they just so, ignore with medication. So, what we were, what we were told that we were supposed to do for the uh, medical community? Oh yeah, They're, so we, we so, should. We yeah, should, we had one of our Tony clients actually take our nutrition us. seminar and teach doctors about this stuff. Well, it's no true because doctors don't, I mean, no offense no. to any doctors, yeah. um, you guys aren't trained in this, and that's fine. That's why you need dietitians, and you need dietitians who are well up to date, yeah. not just someone who, the abstract. just just 
the people who do the research, people who just went to school. the people who look at, who, who who do those things, who are up to date, who are aware of how things interact and things like that. Now, majority of dietitians are going to be very well educated and things like that, but making sure that it's a team effort that you're pairing with dietitians, that you're you're working with a dietitian when it comes to almost every single patient. I mean, if they have a broken leg, I mean, they probably don't need to see a dietitian. Yeah. I mean, but <laughs> I mean, unless they're overweight, then you know, sure. But coming and bringing that all together is one of the biggest things, especially with hospitals, um, and telling doctors that this this is important. And having someone who is specifically trained um, in this field and may be able to pick something up as a nutrient diagnosis, um, they may be deficient, they may be, they may be having toxicity symptoms that might be overlooked, um, but somebody who's been trained who can do those things, who can interpret those labs and be able to see things that the doctor might not be able to, just because that's not what they're trained in. That's not what they're trained in, and that's not their fault. It's just that's not their specialty. Well, even with a broken bone, I mean, maybe you should be working with a dietitian. That could be why. That's true. Actually, there are supplements. Um, yeah, just to heal faster. Yeah, that you can do the heal faster. Bone. Yeah, everything. To take a look, exactly. Why did your Why did your bones break? I mean, are you calcium deficient? Women who are breastfeeding, who are not taking in enough calcium, the body will do everything it can to make sure that the baby survives, and it will literally pull calcium from your bones. And so lactating women, um, women who are pregnant in general, do run the risk of osteoporosis significantly more than anybody else because the body will sacrifice itself to make sure that the baby gets the nutrients that it needs. So yeah, absolutely. I mean, I feel like in all cases, a, a dietitian consult is very important. Wrap it up. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. So in summary... Happy Nutrition Month! Yeah, happy nutrition. <laughs> it's actually the biggest part of the summary. Yeah. Take your quality multivitamin if you're not doing so already. I think the majority of people who we know watch this are taking it. Yeah. Taking yeah. Um, you know, as every few months, I think people should do a, a re-check of their supplements. Mm -hmm. you know, do I still need this? Is my life still like it? Because a lot of supplements are temporary. Multivitamin, you should take the rest of your life. Maybe a probiotic as well, most likely. But everything else, you can... You know, you might need it here. You might not need it on this season. You know, yeah. vitamin yeah. D is a prime example. That's what I was just going to say. I was like, vitamin D during the winter, um, but you might not need vitamin D during the summer because yeah. you might be spending more time outside. Exactly. So, and then, yeah, and there's no point in overdoing supplements. One, for don't spend the money if you don't need to. But two, if you don't, your body doesn't need it, it doesn't need it. Mm -hmm. It's going to use what it needs. Use what it Tony's needs. always talked about. Yeah. And then big things you can always do if you're not sure what you need more of, do blood work. Find out. Like if you're yeah. and if you're going through your doctor, great. If you go through somebody else, great. If you go through us, great. But find out what these things are that may be deficient in your system that you can just support with a multivitamin or maybe yeah. a situational supplement. Quick because, testing. Just get it done. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean preventative care. Yeah. Preventative care is the biggest thing. That's one thing you see, I mean professional athletes do it all the time. Every everywhere you turn now, you're seeing, you know, athletes are getting this test and that test. They do blood work weekly. Uh, or LeBron James spends ten per, puts ten percent of his income, which is a ton. Yeah, I mean, towards his you know. health. I'm um, meaning he has two trainers, two chefs. He has a scientific a scientist team that helps him with his sleep. Yeah. Like I think if we looked at our um out like our salary and we looked at how much we put to supplements and everything that goes towards health. Yeah. Dude, I might say I put 10, 15 percent towards that. I would probably say this because yeah. of all the supplements and everything. I probably put ten percent. Yeah. yeah, I would say five to ten percent of it. Um, yeah. yeah, all the equipment we buy, like any education Absolutely. that we put towards it, like. Well, in that case, then I'm putting a lot more than ten percent because yeah. I'm spending a lot of money on school right now. That's true. <laughs> well, not right now. Forever. Forever. Yeah. Forever. That oh would be paid off forever. Yeah. Well, hopefully not. But yeah. But yeah, that's awesome. I mean that's that's very true. I mean what is important to you and really evaluating that you know where where are you at where do you need to be what do you want you know why are you a member of lifetime if you're not if you're watching this and you're not a member of lifetime why are you going to the gym why did you watch this video what about this video you know caught your eye if it is wanting to find out more information on multivitamins then 
do a little bit of research. You don't have to spend hours. When we say research, you don't have to like scour the web. You just look into it. You know, you know what supplements are good. Why? Um, what's the absorption rate? What does that mean? Look it up and find out. If you have questions, put it in the comments below. Email us. Yeah. We'll be more email than happy. Too. And like I said, that email list too. You know, feel free to to let give us that information so we can get you set up and. Um, get the ball rolling on getting that together. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds good. Yay! Like it. Thank you guys. This is Anthony. This is Stephanie. This is Isaac. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we will see you guys next week. Yes. Bye! Excellent. Thanks for checking us out. If you like this, go ahead, like it, share it, subscribe, check us out on Facebook and Instagram.